This is the Hope Lotus Olympic bike, the same bike that has been used to win multiple Olympic, world and European medals on the velodrome. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the details and tell you everything that you need to know about it. When this bike was released to the world, it received huge attention, but it wasn't a bike designed to rip up the rule book, it was designed to push the rule book to the very limit in order to maximise performance. It's a collaboration between British Cycling, Hope and Lotus, and its design has received input from engineering experts Demetrius Katsanis and Richard Hill. Let's start by taking a look at the frame. It's primarily constructed from carbon fibre and uses a blend of different fibre types and a different layout process specific to each area of the frame. Joining sections of the frame together are these amazing 3D printed titanium lugs from Renshaw Engineering. These help to improve the stiffness of the bike and add to its unique design. No super fancy paintwork on this bike, just a simple clear coat of lacquer to give it a shine. But what about the design? Because these super wide seat stays and fork legs are very different to the norm and push the UCI tube shape rules to their limits. The way the seat stays meet at the top of the seat tube is so unique and the complexity of the design of the fork is somewhat impressive too. The principle behind all of this is to reduce the aerodynamic drag for both the bike and rider as one component. I mean, as impressive as it is, without a rider, it's still going nowhere fast. Fitted to the bike is a five-spoke front wheel and a lenticular disc in the rear. Both are from French brand Mavic and constructed from carbon fiber. The wheels are swapped out depending on the type of event, and in some cases, there's a disc wheel in the front and the rear. Although you'll see these wheels are marked with the letter T on them to indicate they're for training only. Stuck to the wheels, quite literally, are the Vittoria Pista Evo CS tubular tires in a 22mm width. Now, being a track bike, we've got far fewer components than fitted to a road or time trial bike. There are no brakes and just one fixed gear, where we have this absolute whopper of a chainring with 58 teeth fitted to an info crank, which is a dual-sided power meter and records the watt bombs delivered to this bike from the riders lucky enough to race on it. The cranks are 165 millimeters long, which is the usual when riding on the velodrome, and they're fitted with Shimano Dura Ace pedals, which the mechanics have engraved with Hollywood's name. I guess they decided the frame sticker just wasn't quite enough. Well, I've never seen that before. The cranks spin on a custom spec bottom bracket from Hope, and I would imagine uses a high quality stainless steel bearing with low drag seals or perhaps none at all. Although, do forgive me for not taking it apart to check. Following the wide 1 8 track chain to the rear, we have a 15 tooth track sprocket. However, these are continually changed as the riders swap between different training or racing efforts. And then we can see yet more 3D printed titanium with these horizontal dropouts. They look so cool if you ask me, but the reason for the dropouts being horizontal is to adjust the wheel position depending on what gear ratio is used. Up top, we have an ISM saddle with that unique split nose design. This is the PN 1.1 model and is mounted as far rearward as possible on an already set back seat post so that Ollie can get his position dialed in just right. As you'd expect, the seat post is an exaggerated teardrop shape to match up with the seat tube, which as you see lower down has the cutout to mimic the curve of the rear wheel. All features to help make this bike as fast as possible. Actually, speaking about riding as fast as possible, if you'd like to see just how fast this bike is, I've also made a video over on GCM where we can see how fast the bike compares to a velodrome hire bike over a one kilometer time trial when ridden by Ollie Wood, who is part of the Great Britain track cycling team. It's like a motorbike. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, I'll put a link in the description down below for that. Right, jump into the front of the bike, we have yet more 3D printed titanium goodness, with this main section of handlebar, stem and fork crown being made in one piece. That is so cool to see, and it's got this really unique feel to it. The design appears to use a separate section for the drop section of the bars, and I'm assuming this is then bolted into place through the small holes on the outer edge of the handlebar. All speculation, of course, but it would make sense and allow for the bars to be changed in width depending on the rider using them. The drops also have a rubber grip instead of the more traditional bar tape. 
Now then, usually at this point, I'll tell you all the measurements and weight of the bike, but seeing as Ollie was actually waiting for us to give him his bike back so he could start his training session, I was unfortunately not able to get those, but hopefully you can all forgive me for that. So there you have it, a closer look at the Hope Lotus Olympic bike. Hope you enjoyed seeing some of the impressive details. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and let me know what you think of the bike in the comments section down below. And then finally, don't forget to subscribe and check out that video of the bike in action over on the GCN channel. See ya.